uh, uh, iconic show, is doing a special on it tomorrow night. It will be broadcast on PBS stations uh, nationwide. And the it, it's titled Obama's War. Martin Smith is with us. He's one of the uh, he, one of the correspondents who put this thing together. Martin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Very glad to have you with us. And uh, thanks for coming in by Skype so that, so that we can see you as well as talk with you. Um, it's a first for me. <laughs> yeah, great. Martin, uh, we're, uh, and because yeah, we're, we're video streaming this right now, and, and uh, well, in any case, uh, it's, the, it seems to me that if we, if, if the McChrystal plan is adopted by the Obama administration, we, we will be essentially ratifying George Bush's concept of endless wars, we'll be ratifying the notion of uh, a counterinsurgency as a, as a form of warfare, and um, we'll be basically reasserting or asserting that military solutions to problems are the primary solutions. I'm reminded of of um, Abraham Maslow's comment that when every when the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Um, you were you you put this this uh, this uh, documentary Obama's War together. What are your thoughts on those dimensions of the issue, and what's your sense of what's actually going on in Afghanistan? Yeah, um, well, that, that I could answer that for the next hour. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the idea under the Bush administration was to pursue a counterterrorism strategy. Only in the last uh, year or two of the Bush administ of the Bush's eight years did the Pentagon under um, Secretary Gates begin to shift the policy to one of a counterinsurgency strategy. And the difference, of course, in, in counterterrorism, you're going after uh, a body count. You're trying to, to whack uh, the enemy, whether it's mm -hmm. the Taliban or al-Qaeda. In a counterinsurgency, you're focusing on hearts and minds and winning over the people, trying to right. disconnect the people from the Taliban and attach them to Kabul um, or to our troops. And um, so it, it isn't exactly the, the strategy of, of George Bush. It was adopted and it was embraced by Obama um, during a, a, a famous March speech in which he had all his uh, war council standing behind him and announced that he had a new policy towards uh, pursuing um, his goals in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and that was counterinsurgency, was at right. the heart of that. So now that the uh, administration is reconsidering all of this is quite um, quite surprising because it was only six months ago that he fully embraced counterinsurgency. That's interesting. I, you know, the the rationale for Afghanistan. I just you know to be editorially upfront here. I, I was opposed to the Afghanistan bombing campaign from the very get go. Um, according to the 9/11 Commission, I mean, according to the to our official U.S. government reports, 9-11 was planned in apartment buildings in Germany and Spain. And it Florida, was, I might add. And, and Florida, yes, you, absolutely. It was not planned in Afghanistan. The, the guy who was the lead organizer for it and was pulling everything together, Mohammed Atta, or not Mohammed Atta, uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, lived in Pakistan. He was, not, he was never in Afghanistan. The, 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 the guys who did it uh, did not come from Afghanistan. They came from Saudi Arabia, by and large, and they didn't do the training for 9/11 in Sa in Afghanistan. They did it in American flight schools. And That's right. And so there were no and there were no Afghans involved in the um, yeah, not a single one. Those airplanes. Yeah. So you know when when uh, when Bush first identified Osama bin Laden as at least the paymaster of 9/11. And the Taliban said, we will turn him over to a third government, not to America, but to a third government where he'll get a fair trial, uh, if you're willing to accept that. And Bush said, no, I'm not willing to accept that. We're going to start bombing Afghanistan tomorrow. It seemed to me that that was the point at which we stepped off the edge of the cliff or into the briar patch or whatever awful metaphor you want. And we are now fighting a war against an enemy that by and large doesn't exist. I mean, you know, it exists in our minds, the people who hit us on 9-11. They're not there. So why That's are right. we there? What are we doing? Well, it, it's not fair. Uh, everything you've said, um, I agree with. But it's not fair to not include the fact that the Taliban government, under the leadership of Mullah Muhammad Omar, uh, was hosting al-Qaeda uh, training camps and presence 
um, inside Afghanistan. But and, but he was but that continues. was that was true of probably six other countries in the world as well. Sudan, uh, prior Sudan, to Somalia. There are a lot of Pakistan. ungoverned spaces. There are a lot of ungoverned spaces in the world, and the yeah. people that are promoting a counterinsurgency strategy in Afghanistan, uh, I give I give them credit. Uh, many of them believe we should be fighting a global counterinsurgency. We should be going wherever uh, there might be, um, uh, as they say, terrorists, and uh -huh. trying to. Uh, as they would say, drain the swamp. Right, but so, so many of these quote terrorists. I, I, you know, I mean, George Washington was called a terrorist by King George the um, Third. Well, he was. He was a good counter. He was a good insurgent. Right, and and you know they don't consider themselves. I mean, there's the the the, the, the suicide bombers. I'll give you. You know, they, they consider themselves terrorists. But but the average person who's fighting for the Taliban, they consider themselves nationalists. Do they not? I mean, they're just the, trying to get their country back. The Taliban is, an, is um, a form of, uh, it, it, it's Pashtun movement, mm -hmm. to be sure, uh, the Pashtun nationalist movement uh, that wants to, as they had under the Taliban, uh, exert power in Kabul. Um, that's what most of the Taliban are native Afghans uh, who uh, want uh, and, and pledge allegiance to Muhammad Omar uh, and want to take power again. Uh, there's no question about that. Right. Now, there are Arabs, there are Tajiks and Uzbeks who are fighting alongside um, the Taliban in various places at any given time, but the, the movement itself is an Afghan movement. Yeah, and uh, so what are the process, I mean, it, it seems to me, I, I noticed last week that, uh, you know, India is having their own problems with the Taliban. And so what did India do in Afghanistan? They built a 260-mile-long highway from Kabul to Iran so that, so that uh, uh, things could be gotten out of, uh, you know, to, to aid Afghanistan. And now they're in the process of building a huge uh, power transmission line so that Kabul can get electricity 24-7. Isn't that a more effective counterinsurgency and counterterrorism strategy than dropping bombs on people and shooting people? Well, um, uh, under McChrystal... Um, and under Obama and Bush in his la in his last years, um, they they began to see the folly of using so many uh, bombs and airstrikes. Now that didn't mean that it disappeared altogether, and there's certainly still bombings, and there's certainly incidents in which innocent uh, civilians are killed. Um, but the, you know there are a lot of people now who understand that that's not a good policy, so they've shifted to try to winning over the people to. Um, the quote-unquote legitimate government in Kabul. The problem is that since the election, we've seen the, 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 the widespread uh, fraud during the election, mm -hmm. which completely pulls the rug out from underneath um, this counterinsurgency strategy. Because if you're trying to disconnect people from the Taliban and connect them to Kabul, but Kabul is corrupt, then there's no real reason for them to come over. Right. And, and, to that. and that's a disaster, Martin. We're out. Of, we're out of time here. I'm. I'm sorry, but okay. it's, it's a. It's a. A, a very thought-provoking uh, documentary that you've put together. People can see it on PBS tomorrow. Uh, it's Obama's War, airing Tuesday, October 13th, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on PBS. And and uh, check your local station listings. Occasionally, they time shift. But Martin Smith, uh, great work you've done. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for dropping by here. This. This is a topic that. Uh, may well end up being one of the major topics of our lifetime, of our generation, and and as I said earlier, I, I think that this is this has the potential, if he handles it wrong, if if he listens to the equivalents of McNamara, Obama's Vietnam. This is the Tom Hartman program.